Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I'm getting ready to leave to drive back home. So no gym today, just at the house at my at my parents' house. So uh, I wanted to talk about batteries today. Interestingly enough, three sort of things all popped up simultaneously yesterday. And so I figured I would just talk about them briefly. Um, number one, if you haven't seen it, Sandy Monroe is doing a teardown of the Model S Plaid and he's looking at the battery pack right now, which is really fascinating. So I'll leave a link to his video in the description. He's also selling batteries batteries if you're interested in purchasing one you know you can get one and 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 become part of the journey I guess I have one of the uh, the model s plaid um, oh gosh what did they call those things the little slices that are part of the motor um, gosh <laughs> can't remember the name just totally blanking on it right now but anyway I have one of those uh, I got from a fan at uh, when we were at the cyber rodeo in Austin Texas so thank you again that was a really really nice gift anyway it's signed by Sandy Monroe but um, but he's got batteries <coughs> that are available also now so anyway that's a really cool thing uh, and, and definitely watch the video it's fascinating to hear how They've not completely redesigned things, but basically tweaked, you know, what I'm driving right now, which is the Model Y, which is more mass market, slower acceleration, all of that kind of stuff. You know, it works fine, but it's not the ultra ridiculously high performance. So all the little tweaks that they made to make it all work is really interesting. Speaking of the Model Y, uh, I was actually, this is now these two. Okay. So the Sandy Monroe is fact. I'm going to work my way from fact to the most rumor. So... The second piece of the puzzle or the second battery topic is that the new Model Y is coming out of Texas, out of Austin, Texas. So we've got the standard range, which are using 4680 structural battery packs. So again, just a quick reminder, the new uh, Model Y's mind is not quite this way. They have a single piece uh, casting for the rear, which is what this car has. They have a single piece casting for the front. This car does not have that, but those are the Idra Giga Presses where they just, you know, basically go ka-chunk and they just make it and spit it out. And then they have a structural battery pack with the 4680s in the middle, which is the middle part of the whole vehicle. This car has a very different structure. It's got, you know, a, basically, a, a, I don't know, think of it like a, a, what are the, like a lasagna pan or a cake pan or something that you're putting the batteries inside, right? Kind of like that. So the, the cake pan itself provides the structure and there's cross members and whatever. Um, but the batteries don't. They're just dead weight inside the vehicle. The 4680s, on the other hand, <clears throat> uh, provide the, the, the structure, the rigidity for the middle part of the car. So... That's the difference between them. I had thought that in order to retool, because they don't have enough 4680s to do the Model Y long range, again, as far as we know, uh, so that what I thought they were having to do was completely redo a new line from kind of from scratch to be able to make it all work like the Fremont Model Ys. But apparently what's going on is that they created, and I've talked to Joe Justice about this before. You should definitely watch my interviews with him. Um, in fact, I'll link his at the end of this video. But basically, they, the, the idea of agile hardware development is very much like agile software. It's known stable interfaces. So apparently what they've done in the intervening years since we purchased this car, <clears throat> at least at Texas, is that they've built the 2170, <clears throat> excuse me, early morning again, <clears throat> uh, they built the 2170 non-structural packs with the same interface pieces as the 4680 structural packs. So what that means is that you can kind of drop and replace them. So they're not structural, they weigh more, all of that stuff, but the interfaces with the front and the rear of the vehicle are the same. And so you can basically just you know, you don't have to redo an entire line. You just basically take the little hexagon, the cell, where you're putting the 4680s into the car and you fork it out and you have a 2171 and then it forks back together again. So brilliant engineering, obviously, right? It takes a lot of work to be able to make two different, complete uh, different architectures function together, but really cool, very much kudos to Tesla for making this happen. If it's true, Again, I don't know this for a fact, but this number one seems reasonable, and number two, there's some evidence that that's what's going on with this. So assuming that that's correct, that means, again, that you've got a single production line or however many production lines, but just, just imagine one. So you've got one flowing forward, you're building the car, and when it comes to the battery insertion thing, you just branch it out and then branch it back together again. So, you know, a river with a rock in the middle, and it goes, it goes right around the rock and it keeps on going. 
the, the other way of doing this, if this wasn't a drop-in replacement, would be you'd have to have two parallel lines, which has which introduces a lot of inefficiency. And it also doesn't let you go back and forth, right? Maybe at some point uh, they'll want to experiment with a long-range 4680 Model Y, and that allows them to very, very easily do it, right? All they have to do is change the size of the battery pack. Currently, uh, the, the, the estimation is that, was it 280 miles? So I think they're they're looking at, I think it was something like 65 kilowatt hours or something like that, and the long range is like 75. So anyway, somewhere in that order, they're, they're looking at that difference. But then of course, what you could do is go with a 4680 ultra long range or whatever, and, and increase the amount of batteries in the pack to do that. Currently, they are very much battery constrained because they can't manufacture enough batteries to uh, to do the 4680 at high volume. So that was a big problem. Elon Musk talked about this. This is not rumor at all. Uh, the, the Tesla owners of Silicon Valley interview that he did, he spoke uh, at some length about the fact that they're battery constrained. They were missing the 2170 tooling stuff that they needed, but now they have it, uh, apparently. Uh, it was stuck in China at the time he was doing the interview, but apparently they have that now and they're able to fork it out. But the, the really brilliant part about this is not that they're able to do the 2170, but how little disruption it causes to do the 2170. <clears throat> and now, moving on to very, very rumored stuff, right? So, so we've gone from fact to probably right to very much take this with a grain of salt. So just understand that. And if I'm wrong, it's whatever. But if I'm right, it's really interesting. That is that CATL, which is a Chinese battery manufacturer, they, they are really good at making prismatic batteries, which is as opposed to you know, a cylindrical battery, it's just like this. They, they make, they're, they're called prisms, but they kind of, I don't know, I would call them rectangular. At least, you know, they look like, like long skinny rectangles with a positive and a negative note on them. They've created a competitor, a prismatic cell competitor to the Tesla 4680 battery cell. I think similar chemistry, similar energy density, similar charge discharge uh, capabilities and things, but it's in a very different form factor. So that is, <clears throat> you can go out and you can look at it. CA Tales talked about that, that's in the news. The interesting rumor piece of this is that it might be used in the Cybertruck as opposed to the 4680 battery cells. So that is fascinating. Number one, you know, that the, <laughs> it was always supposed to be the 4680s in the Cybertruck, but there is the just a reasonable possibility that this ramp up is taking so long that Tesla doesn't want to just completely slow down and have to wait for the 4680s to ramp. And remember, once those 4680s ramp, the Model Ys, like standard range, long range, performance, whatever, they would all love to eat the 4680 battery cells. Also, you've got Austin and Berlin, and then eventually Fremont. So they all want to eat the 4680 battery cells. <clears throat> and then if you add to it the Cybertruck, and also potentially the Tesla Semi, which is a it's going to use a lot. Both of those things, they're heavy vehicles. So the Cybertruck, you know, people are guessing as opposed to 75 uh, kilowatt hour battery packs, we're looking at over 100, depending on the range and all of that kind of stuff. So these things could be very, very large and require a huge number of batteries. So the, the reasonableness of having an alternative, again, just like with the Model Y long range, is it's always good to have an alternative. So but then the other piece is, I don't know how that works in terms of structural battery packs, right? Because one of the deals with the 4680 was the way it was going to be encapsulated was going to make it very structural. So it was going to save a lot of weight by doing that. But at the same time, prismatic cells, assuming that you can cool them and all of that stuff in the right way, could very well also be able to be structural because of the fact that they're kind of like bricks, right? So if you think about it, they're rectangular. And if you put them in just like bricks where you, you offset the bricks and then you put mortar, which would be some sort of thermally based cooling thing in between and put the channels in between to cool them with liquid, that that would work pretty well for a structural battery pack, at least in one direction. The problem with with, with uh, things like bricks is that they're, they could be rigid in one direction, but flexible in the other way. So anyway, I don't know. It could be possible that it might be difficult to build a structural battery pack using them just because of their shape. But uh, anyway, again, rumor. But if this tr turns out to be true, I would not expect that, you know, Tesla would just make it 
with the prismatic ZATL battery packs, but that they would again have some sort of option where they would have a line that was building the Cybertrucks. They could fork it out. They could build it with 4680 and or CATL prismatic cells and then bring it back together again. So, you know, it, what it means is that eventually when you get a Cybertruck, you might not know which battery form factor was inside it without tearing it down because they could be making changes. They, every other one could be a prismatic cell versus a, a 4680 round cell. So anyway, again, totally rumors at this point, but really interesting if that comes to pass. It, it, it seems like par for the course for Tesla. They are always looking for ways to make things as flexible as possible and not to be battery constrained. They're, you know, battery constrained, except for the chip shortage where there were, you know, that, that has become an issue for them in terms of like just getting chips. But aside from that, for the most part, Tesla historically has always been battery constrained. That's their problem area and that's what they have to overcome. So the more just diversity of battery chemistries, the more diversity of battery form factors, the more diversity of producers making these batteries, the better for Tesla. So if this comes to pass, it'll be a really interesting thing that they could be using multiple form factors in the Cybertruck. Um, and this is different because pretty much every Tesla vehicle up until this point, I think every single one, I don't remember the Roadster, so I'm not positive. They may have used pouch cells but they've all used the round, you know, look like a double A battery, but just really big. They've all used that sort of form factor. So it will be fascinating uh, if they actually choose to use a rectangular form factor, because that will definitely bring with it some interesting uh, trade-offs engineering wise. So anyway, uh, Sandy Monroe watched that really fascinating stuff about the Model S Plaid battery pack. The Model Y long range using 2170 cells um, is Pro, I mean, really likely <laughs> it would make sense. It's just a question of you know how fast they could retool it. But if they're if they're able to do drop in replacements, pretty much, then they can you know make the change like that as soon as they have the tooling to do it. So that's really really good news. And then the CATL prismatic battery cells for Cybertruck and potentially who knows for uh, for the semi as well is really fascinating stuff. So anyway, that's what I got for you all, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm going to be driving back home, so you'll see me back in my studio in the next ones. In the meantime, everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.